blood and sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with the burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Do good in Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar.
Now it was a day of preparation of the Passover. It was, it was about the sixth hour. He said, to the, he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered them, so he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. Pilate answered, 
What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who shall it be. This was to fill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciples whom he loved standing in the body, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine on his approach and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was the, a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the others who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who, he who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture may be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and another scripture says, They will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about seventy-five pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as it is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We continue with the responsory. I will chant a verse and then you sing the refrain. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Father. 
sixth and the last of the Sabbath sermons. The last to discuss is the last to come, the eternal Sabbath. John Gerhard, the father of the Lutheran Church and the source of the six-part series, said of the sixth he enumerated, there is an eternal Sabbath on which we shall rest in both soul and body from the sins, calamities, and miseries of this life. Hebrews talks on the subject. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. As Americans, we take two days of rest, the Jewish Sabbath and the Christian Sabbath, Saturday and Sunday. Even with these two Sabbaths, there remain another, higher, greater, eternal one. It's in heaven, away from all of this suffering and misery. Jesus' whole life, but especially the last three years when he started preaching publicly, were filled with suffering and misery, leading up to the final humiliation, the cross. People tried to throw him off a cliff. People tried to stone him. People tried to trap him in his words. What people? His people. His own people who did not accept him. These were the very people who were prepared to receive the Messiah, but when he came, didn't. If you think about Jesus' existence from eternity, it was copacetic. He had no body, he had no suffering, he had no pain. Then think about his time on earth in human flesh. It was the most tumultuous experience he ever had. But he's died and resurrected, so where is he now? In heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father from whence he shall judge the quick and the dead. By dying on the cross, Jesus took away all the things that would impede us from getting to the Sabbath rest. Jesus rising from the dead propels us into that Sabbath rest of heaven. His word has filled in all valleys of the depths of our sins and torn down every mountain of our sin to give us a smooth way to heaven. So what of us? Hebrews says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Isaiah 66, 23 reads on the subject of the last judgment, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Gerhard concludes from this that in heaven, it will be Sabbath after Sabbath, rest upon rest upon rest. On days when we're weak and weary, think on that. Rest is coming. Maybe part of what got Jesus through Good Friday was that he knew he'd go from that torment back to his rest, not like before his birth, but now as one who knows us and how we feel. And pain, cross, nail, spear, he is well acquainted with it and understands ours. Church Father Origen says, Beyond this world there is an observance of the true Sabbath. The true Sabbath. Because Sunday or not, the kids still scream and fight. Sunday or not, bills are due or past due. Sunday or not, chores call. When else can you insert laundry or cook or clean or mow or whatever? Don't worry. The otherworldly Sabbath that Jesus escaped to is available to us sinners through the forgiveness won by him this day on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 26-28 says, The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, 
then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. God being all in all is the best state of existence we will ever know or ever care to know once we get there. It's the peace or Sabbath that Jesus now know, knows now and offers us by grace. Through faith, believe and be saved by our crucified Lord, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with another canticle, the song of Habakkuk.
and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God, Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross and so remove us from the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion that we may receive forgiveness of sins, redemption from everlasting uh, death through Jesus Christ, our, our Lord. Amen. Amen.